one of the really neat things that T-splines can do that um, you know, I'm, I'm really just kind of blown away by it every time that, um, that I use the command is, it's called TTS pipe. Um, it's, it's basically um, the ability to take a line network and convert it into a pipe surface um, that is continuous. Um, that's, that's a really, uh, really awesome, um, uh, you know, tool. And so what it allows you to do is, is, is to get to something like this, you know, this fully uh, continuous smooth cage um, by implementing um, just a set of lines. Now, the TS from lines command um, provides a way to make complex surfaces um, with predictable results, which is also really nice. And it's, it's really a three-step process that you, you create a control polygon, you make sure that it's connected um, properly, and then you run the command. And it's really just as simple as that. So, you know, starting with a primitive in T-splines, um, extracting its control polygon, uh, and then piping it, you can, you can get to something like this. So let's take a couple steps back to the primitive. So, in my perspective view, I'm just going to bounce over here and take a look at creating a primitive, and I'll use a quad ball. I'm just dragging out, and I'm going to say to output the box and hit enter. And so we have this now in Rhino. Now I'm just going to move it vertically so that it aligns with the origin uh, in the C, right? So it's you know on the C plane. Now one of the things that's nice about T splines is that they play very nicely with um, with commands in Rhino. So if, for instance, I were to turn on my edit mode in T-Splines, and I go over here to my vertex level, I could use commands like, uh, for instance, I'm not sure if you're, you're familiar, but there's a command called set point. That's set, S-E-T-P-T. -T. And I could tell it to snap for instance, its Z position. And I can just drag points right down like this. Now if I go to face mode, for instance, I could, I could select a face. And this is a great example of when you might want to change from the world orientation to perhaps um, normal. Right? You can always bounce right back over to world and, and be pulling this guy out. And so you can see it's really quick to be able to sculpt with T-splines. I'm just using the manipulators and, and working with the control grips. Now, the process, you know, if, if we say that this is our and zero, zero, this is where we're starting. This is our T-spline, right, input. There's a, a, a command that you can use in um, T-splines um, that's a utility that will actually take the control polygon, um, the thing that is surrounding, um, in this case, since we're in, um, in box mode, you, you can see it's literally the edges, um, and extract that from your model. Since it's a utility object, it's going to be in our utility menu, and it's called Extract Edges. And when I run that command, I just have to mouse over my, um, my object and hit Enter. And you're going to see that, um, that uh, you now have a bunch of edges here. Now, since we have our edges, right, we can call this our, um, our edges, right? we can now use the command pipe. So the idea is that you have some, um, some kind of object, right, um, you, 
extract the, the edges from it, and then you use those edges to then be able to pipe them and create one continuous smooth cage. So T-splines, right, whenever we were using the create menu, we went to primitive. But beside primitive, you'll notice that there is something called pipe. And you can get to that from the um, from curves, pipe, and you just select, I mean it's as simple as this, you select your, your curves, you'll have a bunch of um, kind of odd displays that pop up. These are the um, showing you kind of what the dimension of the cage is. In this case the radius, if I change that to say 0.1, right, it's much smaller. We have here um, the local radius, right, and if you notice, between here we have a whole lot of segments. So this is as if the face was extruded along that edge multiple times. If I click segments, right, I can just mouse over and select all of these segments and just say something like, I don't know, three for instance. And when I say three, you'll notice there's going to be a whole lot uh, of geometry that disappears, right? Because it's just going to be uh, calculating at a much, much lower resolution. Now, if you remember, that low resolution um, ultimately allows you to uh, um, ultimately allows you to be able to art, uh, smooth uh, uh, with a, a kind of greater um, kind of smooth degree of smoothness as you transition from a linear um, kind of polygon segment to uh, something which is meeting at a node. Now if I hit enter, I now have right this awesome T-spline object. And I can just click right here on my smooth toggle. And it completely smooths out. And I mean that is a really, really awesome uh, tool. So take a moment and um, you know try working with your uh, T-spline lines and um, try modifying the segments of, of uh, the command uh, so that you can see what happens whenever you decrease or increase the number of segments um, that you're selecting. So I'm going to say T-splines pipe, select, and here you can see I have more segments. So let's take a look at modifying that. So go ahead and experiment with the uh, segments options here and um, give, it, give it a couple of different uh, values to see what comes as a result. And if you have any questions, take this opportunity to go ahead and drop that into the question window and we'll address them as a group. So one question we had was, what are some of the alternate options that you have within these uh, segment settings? Notice that there are uh, multiple options here under preview, including box, box shaded, etc. And that's just for the initial um, preview of what you're going to get as a coarse resolution object. So if you have um, a lot of segments here and you hit enter, um, when you convert this to a smooth object, you'll see that you uh, will have a lot, uh, you know, as you transition from here to here, uh, a lot, it's going to be a lot tighter. And then once we get over to here, you're going to have these kind of intersections that are occurring. So this is why, you know, I encourage you to try to work at a at a much uh, lower resolution so that it's able to then smooth this out um, a lot easier. Okay, so this 